Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be going over my top five tools for the beginner carver or somebody looking into chainsaw carving. You know, what tools do I need to get started? What are the first five tools I should buy if I'm going to get into chainsaw carving? And that's what I'm going to go over today. Just my opinion, my list of roughly five. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll help you guys out. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you guys haven't already. And uh, let's get started. <laughs> All right, guys, so the first thing on my list is obviously a chainsaw, okay? Now, I got a couple different saws up here, mostly for reference, because we have different bars and different setups and, and different saws. Now, normally, most people start off with a gas saw, and I do recommend your first saw being the Steel MS-170. It's one of the smaller saws. It's fairly cheap. You guys can get it from $150 to $170 if it goes on sale. And you know what? It's a great little saw to start off with. With that saw, you guys can do blocking on small to medium bears. You guys can also do quite a bit of detail work with that saw stock. You heard me, stock. No detail bar, just a stock chainsaw bar. Your regular bar that comes on it, you guys can do a lot of work, all right? So you don't have to run out and change your sprocket and change your bar, get new chains and... You don't have to do that right away, okay? Make sure you want to carve. Make a few pieces, get into it. Maybe sell a few pieces so it can start to pay for your hobby. You don't have to run out and buy all this stuff at once to get started. But the first thing you need is a chainsaw, okay? You do. Whether it's a Craftsman, a Poulon, I prefer the steel. And uh, yeah, get started. But once you get your saw, you need a few things that are not tools. You guys need to make sure you're wearing safety shoes. Um, steel toe are the best. You drop that saw, you goof up, you hit your toe, saved, right? I don't always wear safety shoes, but hey, do as I say, not as I do, right guys? So safety shoes are a good thing to have. Chaps, you guys should always be wearing a pair of chaps if you're going to be running chainsaws. Sometimes I even keep my chaps on when I'm running the power tools to clean the saws up. Either you guys can get chaps or full pants. Now, I've seen people get off-brand ones, get the cheapest ones you can find on Amazon. Okay, that's great, but keep in mind, if they need to be used, if they need to stop a chainsaw from going through your leg, just remember you bought the super cheap ones. Okay, just let's think about that here. Okay, this is safety. That's safety. So, you know, I, I buy the steel brand. Buy the Husqvarna brand. Buy, buy a brand that's got good ratings, good reviews, and has been tested thoroughly. But get some chaps, all right? Stop wasting time and get some chaps. Next, you guys should have a pair of gloves. A pair of gloves that allow you to move your fingers and your hands and have a good grip. Why? Because sometimes you get oil, all right, on the handle of your saw or on your right here where you got the trigger and you're holding it and your bare skin can become very slippery. Also, those gloves, will come in, those gloves will come into play when you guys are using power tools, all right? Sometimes you slip and hit your hand. If you got gloves there, you just saved a finger, all right, from getting shredded. So, gloves are a great thing to have. Earmuffs. You guys should be wearing some sort of ear protection. I see a lot of guys who carve all the time, no ear protection. I, use, I like to wear the earmuffs. Sometimes I even put my AirPods in there so I can listen to music. But something to cover your ears to get away from that drowning out sound of your chainsaw running because you're going to lose your hearing. You're going to lose your hearing. And if this is a hobby that you really love and get into, you're also going to get some bigger chainsaws down the line. Why not start some good habits now and wear some earmuffs or some earplugs, whatever works for you. The other thing and one of the final things, which is, there's, there's tons of other safety gear you guys can get into, but one of the other things is some kind of eye protection, right guys? I'm usually wearing just my glasses, sometimes safety shields, sometimes not, but they're at least protecting my eyes. I've also got a face shield on the half helmet thing I wear that's got earmuffs. That comes down and protects me from the sawdust in my face. You guys should wear safety glasses, all right? You get sawdust in your eye, it's, it's crappy. It makes for a horrible time. I always got to run in the house, get a Q-tip, dig that thing out, splash water in my eye. I'm down for like a half hour trying to dig a chunk of sawdust out of my eye. And you know what? If I had just wore that screen or put my side shields on, I would have saved that time and I could have continued to work. So what do we got? 
safety shoes, right? Steel toe, some sort of a composite, something to protect your toe because pieces will fall off that carving and hit you in the foot. If you're not ready for it and you're wearing sandals or sneakers, guess what? Your toe just got squashed. Now, don't always do as I do, just do as I say because there's plenty of times in the summer I'm in my flops or my sneakers out here, but you know, hey, that's me. You guys asked what I think you should use, so I'm letting you know. So, safety shoes, chaps, gloves, eye protection, ear protection. All right, guys, keep that stuff in mind. When you buy your saw, buy that stuff. All right, chainsaws. So we went over the MS-170 as your first saw. Lots of good stuff, good all-around all saw. Now let's talk about the next tool. All right, you've done some work on that saw, and really you could move right into buying power tools. Or you can move into buying a next chainsaw. Now, to me, the next chainsaw after MS-170 would be the Steel MS-250. This is a great all-around saw. All right, as you guys can see here, they're about the same size, but you do have a lot more power out of this saw. If you want those specs and all that stuff, go to SteelUSA.com and look it up. I'm not giving the whole spiel as to what they are, but I'm telling you the MS-250 is a little bit bigger saw than the 170. This saw handles a lot of blocking for me. I do a lot of small to medium carvings and some large, and this saw has been used on everything from this big to four, five, six feet tall. All right, this is a great all around saw. So maybe this could even be your first purchase saw. Up to you. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but I'm just saying, this is a great saw. This saw does come in though right around that 350 to 380 mark. I can't quite remember guys, but you're gonna spend quite a bit more. So 150, to almost 400 bucks all right now these saws can be modified all right we talk safety gear we talk chainsaws let's talk about the saws that can be modified so a lot of times people jump in and buy a steel ms-170 and the first thing they do is throw a detail bar on it and then they ruin that detail bar okay there's there's a couple of things going on there all right guys really we have to talk about putting dime tip bars or Tuny bars, whatever on your saw. If we're talking dime tip, which is what I mostly use, you're talking about a quarter pitch chain. Whether it's 43 gauge or it's 53 or it's 50 gauge, it's still a quarter pitch. All right. So if you're gonna put a dime tip bar on your smaller saw, all right, let's say you buy these two and you're like, this is gonna be my blocking saw. Okay, and I'm gonna make the MS-170 into my detail saw. Perfect. The next thing you're gonna to need to turn this into a detail saw is you're going to need a quarter pitch sprocket. All right, guys, you need to change the sprocket in here because the sprocket in here is not usually a quarter pitch sprocket. How do you know? Easy. You're gonna go ahead and look at, where is it? The numbers right here. And if you're buying a steel, you're at a dealer. Your dealer should know what they're talking about. They should. You can too. You look at that bar. All right. So like I'm looking here. I know this is three eighths and I know this runs 43 gauge chain. It says it right on the bar. All right. And there's other numbers on there for like how many links and all that. And that's how you match your chains up. Anyway, what I'm getting at is if you go ahead and turn this into a detail bar, you need to replace that sprocket. So let's say we're putting a dime tip bar on. We need to get the sprocket to do that the kit, and you can get that right through the steel dealer. Now I ordered this one through a different website because I got the bar and kit together so I could try out that cannon, but normally I'm running the steel dime tip bar. I know we're talking about a lot, we're going over a lot real quick, but you guys can just watch this video over and over, no big deal. So let's say uh, you got your MS-170, right? You're gonna put that dime tip bar on. When you order up a dime tip bar, tell them you also need the quarter pitch sprocket kit to go with it, and you also need the carving chain. When you get that order up that chain, order two. There's no reason to not have two, okay guys? So at that time, you're gonna start looking at some more money. All right, you really are. You're, at that time, you're gonna have like probably 300 bucks into this saw. So 150 for the saw, roughly another 150 for the bar, two chains and a sprocket. So $300 into a detail saw, okay? This ain't me bragging, this is me just showing you, talking to you guys about what you can do. All right, so you do that, your detail saw is set up. Now you've got your MS-250. You're blocking out with it, right? You love it, it's a great saw, I know I do, I like it, it's awesome. I'm even thinking about buying a second, 
I don't know, we'll see. Now, if you look at a normal MS250, you might notice my bar is a bit smaller. Why? Why is it smaller? If you guys have been following me for a while, you know. If you haven't, then you don't. So what I did is I took the bar and the sprocket that I removed from my MS-170 and I put them on my MS-250. All right, so the MS-250 was running 50 gauge chain. It was all bigger, beefier stuff. I didn't want all that. I wanted this thing to scream and cut like butter. And so I said, let's downsize the bar and downsize the chain. And that's what I've done. Now I do go through bars a little bit more because they're not meant to have this much power running through them. But I'll tell you what, for me, it's worth it. I don't care. I like the way it works. It, it works together. So I took the original sprocket off the MS-170 and it fits right on the 250. Does it fit other saws? I have no idea. You guys would have to play with it and figure it out. I don't know. I've had people ask me that question. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I don't know. But after putting that sprocket on from the 170 onto this 250, I then could put the bar on and I could also run the chain that fits. So now I'm running 43 gauge instead of 50 on this 16 inch bar, 3 8 pitch. And this thing scrapes. If you guys want to know how to do that, I'll have a video link popping up here where I actually swap that stuff out and you guys can see how to do it if you want. All right, so first saw, MS-170. Second saw, MS-250. Right, chainsaws are covered. This one was just here to show you guys the steel dime tip. Next, a couple power tools. Now, I'm not counting the attachments as another tool per se. Okay, so you got your saws. Where should you go from there? Well, I really think you need to get yourself some kind of sander, and I really believe that the first thing you should go ahead and get sanding wise is an angle grinder. All right. Now with an angle grinder, you guys can use the flat discs that are replaceable, you know, like 60, 80, 120 grit with a backing piece that goes in here. It's a good cheap way to get going. You know, you just bought an angle grinder and now you can start sanding. So after your chainsaw work, you're able to sand it down. You can even do some detail work with this, clean up the snout and those sorts of things. Um, when you're ready to step up your game, I suggest looking into saber tooth tools. That's what I run. Mine's currently clogged because I got done grinding out on a wet piece of pine and it just happened. Anyway, this is what they look like new though. I got a new one sitting right here. Um, these work awesome. You don't have to replace them unless you, you break them, you hit them on metal, you hit a nail, you hit a rock, you throw it around instead of gently taking care of it. You break those teeth off, then you got to replace it. But... I believe that I get my money's worth out of these and I don't have to keep going to the store for sanding heads and flap sanders and all that stuff. But if you guys are just starting, that's the place to go. Now, as far as an angle grinder goes, it depends on how much you want to spend. I do not recommend getting the cheapest grinder. Don't go to Harbor Freight and get their $11, $12 grinder. I know that's all some of you guys can, can afford, but try to save up and get something just a little better. Don't get that $12 one right they have other ones there for a little more money but honestly if you just go to the hardware store you can find a name brand grinder for just about the same price as the one you get at harbor freight now, i'm not knocking harbor freight because i do run their tools but there are a few things that i've learned harbor freight tools are usually a little bit louder and i tend to see more vibration in the tool than a nice name brand tool okay now this is just a hitachi it's nothing crazy I do plan on upgrading this to possibly the DeWalt grinder or the Makita in the near future, but it has gotten me by and it's done the job and I think it came in at like maybe 40 bucks, 50 bucks. It wasn't that bad. I got it fairly cheap, okay? So you guys can do that. An angle grinder. After the angle grinder, I don't have it here, but what you guys should really look, you know what? Hold on. I'm going to go get it. Let's hit a commercial. I'll be right back. Ta-da! All right, hope that was a good commercial. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So, chainsaws, an angle grinder, and then you guys should get yourself a torch, okay? So starting out, this torch could save you the money in paint, all right? You don't have to buy aerosol paint to paint your bears unless you really want to, but you can start by burning them. Getting yourself the uh, Benzomatic 8000T. This has been a, uh, a pretty good torch. It's worked pretty well. 
runs off these little one pound Coleman propane tanks. Okay, it's not super hot, or for those of you starting out, it's, it's a smaller investment, all right? I still use it on different carvings. I do use my big expensive turbo torch that I saved up for, but this is what I started with. So chainsaws, angle grinder, and a torch. You can either buy this cheaper one or you guys can spend a bunch more money and buy a more expensive one. Now, as we're getting into all these tools and attachments, I will have links through Amazon down below to everything, basically except chainsaws, because steel doesn't do that. So you guys can go there and I will try to have the same or something similar or maybe something better that I think would be a good fit. You guys purchase through those links, they help support the channel and I greatly do appreciate it. You guys can also check out the links, hit that description, go down below. Follow me on social media. You guys see what I'm working on day to day and uh, follow along. I've also got a Teespring account. I've got some cool t-shirts made up. You guys can go there, purchase those. Every purchase counts toward uh, making this channel better. Get me that closer to doing this every day and not having to go to a full-time job. And uh, yeah, owe it all to you guys for watching and subscribing. And I really do appreciate it. One other thing, we're going to talk about a giveaway. A giveaway that you guys will seriously enjoy at the end of this video. I'm going to talk about it, so be sure to continue continue watching all right don't go nowhere chainsaws angle grinder torch what should we get next kyle what should we get next i really think one of the next things should be a die grinder all right guys the die grinder and uh you know my absolute favorite bit should be the bit you buy first and that is the saber tooth half inch flame bit all right, it's quarter inch shaft, so it fits in the die grinder. It's a half inch flame bit. This is the green bit, maybe not in this photo, but it is green, and uh, it's the coarse bit. Also, this is the green disc. Green is my favorite ones to use on the pine that I'm always carving, okay? Just green. Sabertooth tools make some awesome stuff. Look, at that. I, got, I got some shirt here, I got some swag rolling. Might be like, why are you wearing that shirt? Because I've been an ambassador for Sabretooth uh, this past year. It's been a great experience working with them. And honestly, I'm not talking about these tools in this video to like promote them and try to try to do. I'm talking about these tools in this video. Well, I guess I am promoting them because I really do think they're the best. I think they do the greatest job. I haven't had any issues unless it was an issue of my own where I broke the teeth off because I hit something. Okay. I've never had uh, any of them break or any issues like that. And so I really do think they're a great tool and you guys should really, really check them out. So a die grinder and the half inch flame bit, best one. I use it for doing eyes, nose, the mouth, nails, even cleaning up fur and details on bears. I use this on just about every single carving that I have done. This flame bit has gone and at least touched that piece probably once. There's, there's almost no doubt about it. So again, this is just a Harbor Freight die grinder. It's Chicago Electric. They work. Remember, I was kind of bashing Harbor Freight, but here it is. I buy these so that I can have three or four of them ready to go. What do I mean? Well, I've got several saber tooth bits, and so this one's always in, but now I can also have my other one with a ball in there, the sphere bit. And I can have a couple other ready to go. So when I'm in a big project, I don't have to keep changing them out. But for you guys, getting one to start, right here. Awesome tool, awesome bit, perfect way to go. So you get a saw, an angle grinder, a torch, the die grinder, plus those bits. And then, and then, you guys could go ahead and look into this guy. Get yourself a drill and a flap sander. Now, you might be looking at the lineup thinking, well, I'd rather have that first. That's fine. You don't have to do it in this order. This is just how I'm going over it. And this is the order where if I had thought it out when I first started, this is how I would have purchased things. Now, my flap sander on my drill, it's just a drill half inch chuck with the Sandiflex. Sandiflex works awesome. I like this thing a lot. You can replace the attachments in here for the, the paper or you can make your own if you, you know, a little ingenuitive. You guys can figure that out. It's pretty easy. Um, this is great for finishing up your carvings. So you saw it, you can hit it with this, you can hit it with this, you can torch it, and then you can come through and hit it with this at the end. If you don't want to spend the money on a drill and a Sandiflex, get a hard bristle brush. So after you torch it, you brush that whole thing down to get the soot and stuff off before you clear coat. Ah, clear coat. So we should talk about that a little bit, right? Well, I'm getting ahead of myself, kind of excited about the video. 
So these are like the tools that I think you should be looking into investing and probably in the order that I just went over, right? So you can get started with the saw. Make sure you want to carve. Maybe you get going and you're like, yeah, I don't like this. Guess what? No harm, no foul. You didn't waste a bunch of money. Again, then you move into an angle grinder, right? You'd be able to clean up your piece and do a lot of different things. The torch to get the fuzzies off and add color to your piece. And then if you want to do one step further, you can carve out your eyes. You guys can go ahead and look into the die grinder. And then for extra sanding and additional smooth and you know removing those fuzzies, you can go ahead and get yourself the flap sander. So, whew, boy, talking a lot. I got to take a breath. Blech. All right. Sabertooth Tools, guys, they make a ton of stuff. I won't be able to share all the links, but I'll share what I've got here. You guys can go to sabertoothtool.com and see what they've got. All right, guys, so we've gone over the saws and the tools. We should talk about finish. Now, I use a spray paint a lot, just rattle can spray paint. Um, if, if I'm not leaving it brown from the torch, right? I'll go through, I'll use rattle can, paint it black. But you want to be able to finish it for the elements. And when the paint has dried and it's time to put something on it to really help protect it, I like to get the Helmsman Minwax, all right? We got to get the oil base, not the water-based junk. If you get the water base, it turns gray, and I've never had a good experience with it, and it looks like trash. So what I do, I get that Helmsman. I usually get an empty can, dump half in there. That one, I put about a third mineral spirits and just stir it really, really well. Put two coats of that on your carving after paint has dried and you're done. And it's a really good way to seal it and protect it. I don't put anything on the bottom. I let that air dry. Um, also, keep in mind your piece is probably going to check and crack. Let it go for a year or two. And then I got some videos on here you guys can learn how to fix it. So, anyway, these are the tools. This is what I think you guys should start off with if you're just learning to carve. You're just getting into carving. And, um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. I don't know. Hope, hope, hope it's helpful. I got nothing else. <laughs> I got nothing else, guys. I really, I really, I got nothing. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, this has answered the questions for those of you just starting. You guys can always feel free to ask questions below. Now, I know some people aren't going to agree with me, and you know what? It's totally fine because this list is my preference list, right? And there's been people that have asked, what's my preference? And here it is. Uh, yeah, be sure to smash subscribe, give this video a like, and uh, keep an eye out for that next video, guys. Oh, hey, we forgot something, didn't we? Giveaway, right? I want to have the opportunity to give away a really great tool with some really great bits to either a beginner carver or somebody that's been doing it a while. It's just whoever ends up winning wins, right? But we need to get to 10,000 subscribers, guys. So what I say give my videos a thumbs up, hit subscribe, share your favorite videos with your friends and family, share your videos across the social media, remind them to hit subscribe and give it a like. You guys, if you haven't, you guys want to see what I'm planning to give you? Yeah? Okay, hold on, don't go anywhere. Oh yeah, here it is, right here, DeWalt, okay? DeWalt die grinder. This is going to be a very cool tool for somebody. Cool tool. This is going to be a great tool for someone starting to carve or, you know what, somebody that's even been doing it a while. I know I would like to win it. I should have bought one for myself, but I didn't. I bought one for you guys. Somebody will be running this and I will probably still, you know, be running the Harbor Freight tool, but <laughs> whatever. Um, this, this is how thankful I am to have all of you that watch. I, I really am. But I want to, I really got that goal for 10,000 and we get to 10,000 subs. Right now we're like 2,000 away. We recently hit 8,000. Thank you, everybody. Seriously excited about that. Really pumped about it. Just a, just a great, my 8,000 subscribers. For real. You guys are awesome. I yeah. do these videos for you guys and it means a lot. 8,000 subscribers. It's a big milestone for me. I'm excited about it. Now, we get to 10,000. This is what we're giving away. I've talked about it before. Oh, she's beauty. Yellow and black and says DeWalt. Look at this thing. Got this little trigger action. I haven't even used this guy. Seriously, I haven't used it. it whoever wins this, you're going to use it. Look at this nice hand grip up here. Oh, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous tool. And I will be giving Oh wait. Oh, it also comes with some wrenches. Get some wrenches in there, please. Great. 
That one's got a little bend in it. I don't, I don't know. Got some great wrenches that come with it anyway. But I'm also going to give you guys a lucky winner. Not you got a lucky winner. These two, two of my favorite carving burrs from Sabretooth. We're talking about the half inch and the quarter inch. These are, these are great, great detail burrs. And uh, yeah, one lucky winner will get this set up. When we get to 10,000 subs, I'll figure out a video that you guys got to, I don't know, do something so you can be entered. And uh, we'll do a live drawing. So, I mean, this video is for the beginner, the person that wants to learn. How awesome would it be to win this tool and win these burrs? I think it would be pretty sweet. But we got to get to 10,000 subs, all right? If you're watching this video and you're already past 10,000 subs, I probably already did the giveaway and I am sorry. But you can still hit subscribe. We'll probably do more giveaways in the future. So, anyway... Yeah, that's it guys. That's all I got. I really hope this has been informational. I hope it's been, you know, a good video going over everything. I hope it's answered your questions. I hope it's encouraged you to, you know, have some fun, make something cool, stay safe, and I will see you guys in the next video.